Okay, Dayton 24-7 now is Alex Taylor here, joined by Governor Mike DeWine. Governor, thank you so much for thank stopping you. by and talking to us today. Um, obviously, with the tragedy that happened on Sunday, there's, there's a lot to discuss, but you've had some proposals in, in recent days and thoughts of your own on how to fix the problem. Um, let's start with the chant that kind of inspired you or you had spoke about before, do something. How did that strike a chord with you, and, and what did that inspire you to do moving forward? Well, you know, there were people uh, that night at the prayer vigil who were angry. I suppose everybody was angry. My wife, Fran, and I were angry. Uh, and people have a right to, to be upset. This is an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, so we had a number of proposals, frankly, that we've been working on, some of them for up to two, three months. Uh, but it was time uh, to put these out. So we held a press conference on, on Tuesday morning and laid out a number of different proposals uh, for the state legislature. Uh, these are things that will matter. I can't guarantee you that they will, um, there'll never be another tragedy like this anywhere. But these are all things that we propose that w I think we can get past uh, and that I know will save lives and make a difference. What do you think is kind of instrumental in, in making the move first to save lives? A lot of gun activists say that it's, it's not the guns and, and they're for that. Do you think the guns have anything to do with it or do you think it's more of a people or per person issue? You know, I think there's many things that we can do. I mean, one of the things that we, we have proposed is something that's been talked about for a long time and that is the situation where in a, in a community, in a neighborhood, there is someone who maybe has a mental health problem, uh, someone maybe who's an alcoholic, a drug addict, they've got a bunch of guns and their family feels and knows that they are a threat to themselves and they're a threat to the community or the police know that. Um, our proposal is that we have set up a, a mechanism by which the police and or the family can go to court and there can be a hearing and a judge make a decision uh, based on you know all the evidence that the judge hears whether or not that person is a danger to themselves and a danger or a danger to the community um, there's been proposals in the past they've been labeled red flag uh, uh, legislation which haven't gone anywhere in Ohio and I think the reason they've not gone anywhere is because they, they really did not respect the Second Amendment what we did uh, beginning uh, I think about three months ago now uh, is start talking to proponents of the Second Amendment uh, who had been against the, the previous bill and said, look, w w we all agree there's a problem. What do we do to fix the problem? And they came forward and they gave us ideas. Uh, I worked with uh, our, our chief lawyer on this, uh, Andy Wilson, who used to be a county prosecuting attorney in Springfield. Mm -hmm. And we all came together. Uh, John Houston uh, did some real work on this, lieutenant governor, and came up with a plan. And the plan is that basically it can be activated by the police, it can be activated by the family. Uh, you actually have to go into court. The person has to be notified. They have to be given the right to come in and make their, their case as well. So we protect the Second Amendment. We protect people's constitutional rights. But once we pass this, we're also going to be saving lives because we're going to be separating these individuals from guns. But second, we're going to be getting them help. Uh, we provide in this bill that the judge has the ability to compel this person to get, get some help, which, boy, I tell you, as a, as a former county prosecutor, I, I've seen this happen so many times, and so many families have faced real tragedy because the person had a problem and they couldn't, could not get help. Let me yeah. just add one more thing. Absolutely. Uh, everybody who um, has a mental health problem, it's not a, it's not a shooter. 93% um, of the people who have a severe mental health problem are not violent in any way. They are not dangerous. And so we, we have to keep saying that because the stigma that's attached to mental health, we want people to be able to get help. Uh, we should treat it like we treat any other uh, illness. And you know I think that's, that's the way we should look at it. So we don't want to stigmatize by this law or this discussion that we're having today, uh, you know, people who have a mental health problem. Right, and as a former attorney, you're familiar with, in certain cases, there's emergency orders that can be filed. Would this be something, the, the immediate takeaway of their weapons for if the family says, or law enforcement says, we want to take away their weapons or we want to protect this person from themselves, would it be an immediate emergency order or would there be a waiting period? There, there, there would have to be a hearing. 
and what we provide in here is that the judge would, we would hope he or she would hold the hearing right away, but they would have to hold it within the first hearing within three days. There would be a determination about whether to take the guns then. Then there would have to be a second hearing uh, within a 12-day period of time. So again, due process built into it, but we hope that the judges would, you know, particularly with a great emergency, move very quickly. And no fear for that three-day period being something that could spark even more anger because in that time, if the family truly is fearful, right. and I think families know best at first, you have those people yeah. at home in a lot of cases, and other times families don't know. You can never, ever, you know, blame the family for those type of no, instances. Right. Well, but would there be that fear of that three-day waiting period? Look, anything can happen, uh, right. but usually we're in a situation where they know it's, this guy is a ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know when he's going to go off. It usually takes another something that triggers that mm -hmm. for him to just go off and, and then do, do something. And this is for the protection of that person, right. but it's also for, for the protection of the public. It's, it's both, and both are very important. So another thing that you mentioned was giving citizens more access to those state psychiatric hospitals, yeah. mentioning that those people might not have room because they're, they're full already. What's your proposal regarding the hospitals? Well, I've, I've heard time and time again from people in the mental health community that they say, look, we don't have space in hospitals. I get somebody in, they need to go to the hospital right away. There's no place for them to go. And so that's, that is dangerous too. That is not good. It's not good for the community. It's not good for that individual. What we have found is that the state psychiatric hospitals are filled up basically by misdemeanors, people who have been charged with a misdemeanor, people who are not dangerous in any way, but they're sent to the mental ho health hospital really to teach them about the criminal justice system so that they can communicate with their lawyer. Uh, we believe that this can be done in the community, in an outpatient basis. Uh, we don't have to really clog up our psychiatric hospitals that really are so full today that we can't get people who really, really need the help in there. So this is, again, something that we think that will make a big difference. How are you planning on going about pushing this moving forward? So the, the chant, going back to the chant, it was do something. These are, these are proposals and they're great ideas, but what's the next step to putting these plans into action? Well, we've made these proposals to the state legislature. We're already starting to talk with members of the legislature. I'm meeting with the Senate president tomorrow. On Monday, I'm reading, meeting with the, the Speaker of, of the Ohio House. So these are w things that cannot take place. You're absolutely right, unless they would be passed by the state legislature. There are other things, though, that you know, we have already started. For example, the identification of someone at an early age who has a mental health problem or who is not just a mental health problem, but somehow acting out someone that's a threat to society. We need to reach them, whether a threat or not, because we need to get them help. So in the budget that the state legislature just passed last month and that I proposed, $675 million that's going to go out to local school districts so that they can help identify kids who have a problem and then get them the help that they need. Uh, I just, we just left uh, some members of the Adam H. Boards uh, in the Miami Valley. They've done, a, by the way, a phenomenal job in reaching out to the victims and the victims' families and, and helping them get through this crisis. But one of the things that we talked to them about was how important it will be that they will be able to assist the schools now and give the schools the help that they really need. And I think in this case, um, the word has come out that Connor Betts, the shooter, had incidences in schools that may have led people to believe that he could be violent in the future. So that proposal is something that is instrumental because those teachers and the family are the people that are going it, to be around, it, and that's it, how you it, feel. Correct. Absolutely. Look, it's, it's directly on point. If you look at almost every one of these mass shooters, mm -hmm. You can go back in his history, and it's almost always a he, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go back in his history, and you'll find that in grade school or high school, there are a bunch of warning signs that were either ignored or really weren't dealt with. And so these guys tell us early on there potentially can be a problem. We've got to act and act early. And with the money that the legislature has provided uh, at my request, we think that these schools will be able to really be able to do that. 
The community here is so strong. On a more positive note, we have yes, the sign behind us, the Dayton Strong, and, and you've been to the Oregon District and you've seen the memorials and you're close to here yourself. Yeah. Your home is close. What have you seen in the community that has really touched your heart or what's something the community can do now to help positive well, things move you, forward? You know, Fran and I were over here the morning after this occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, we met with the mayor and then we went out and looked at the, looked at the scene and it was a uh, you know, I'm a former prosecutor, so I've seen crime scenes, but this was just horrendous uh, with, with, with the blood. And I think the th one thing that really struck both Fran and me was there was a vendor who had a cart there, and I guess he was selling tacos that night. And when we got there the next morning, he had been killed. There was blood there. His body was, of course, gone by then, but the food was still on the cart. And you just, you know, it's like right in time. It was just time was stopped at that at that moment. Uh, but what I've seen from this community is what I would expect. Uh, Dayton uh, is a strong community, Montgomery County, the Miami Valley. Um, everybody really did what they should have done. Uh, the first responders, the police who were there, stopped this killer, uh, stopped him right at the edge of the, of the door going in. And if he had got in two, three, four more feet and inside, you'd have had dozens and dozens more people who have been wounded or, or killed. So the first responders went towards the danger. Uh, most of us go away from danger. They're, what they do is they go towards danger. Uh, but all the way from the paramedics uh, to the hospitals that were, were involved, they all just did an absolutely phenomenal job. And, and just we can't really praise them enough. I think the thoughts for the future moving forward um What's your message to the community, to Dayton, to Ohio, to just continue to stay strong in, in light of doing something? Well, I, I think a couple things. One, Dayton will remain strong. This is a great community. Some people, though, in the future are going to feel that trauma uh, later. Everybody, each one of us is different. Some of us react immediately, some react later. So get help if you need help. That would be my message for people in, in Dayton. Uh, number two, for the entire state, um, you know, if, if we see somebody who has a problem, speak up. Uh, whether that is somebody in, in grade school or in high school, speak up. Let's see if we can get that person some help. Uh, let's identify them. Let's protect everybody else. And that's what's so important. Governor, thank you so much thank for you. your time and thank you for coming here today. Signing off of, for now, Dayton 24-7. Now is Alex Taylor.